Welcome back to your very own live safari here in the Maasai Mara. We have found that lioness we saw earlier. She has been harassed by hyenas. We're not quite sure which pride she belongs to yet, but she's hiding behind a little termitaria on the edge of the little lugger that flows into the the world famous marsh could she be part of the marsh pride returning well only time is going to tell remember if you have any questions for us you can do get hold of me on twitter by using the hashtag safari live and this is completely live you are sitting in kenya with me on safari now we saw all those hyenas on the wildebeest kill a little bit earlier and we're not sure whether she might have killed that wildebeest or whether uh, the hyenas did and she was attracted in to try scavenge off it. As lions are not scared of a bit of scavenging, although she was severely outnumbered this morning. There must have been about 40 hyenas in total around. Now, she is very hungry, and that's why we've decided to sit with her, because at some point today, we're hoping that the gnormless wildebeest will gnormlessly wander right up, going meh, meh, and stumble upon her while she is lying in the grass. And uh, there's still a lot of hyenas around. They're chasing each other around down there. You see, Dave, down there. There's still a bit of action. See the tails up. Uh, oh, that looks like a bit of a dominance display going on. See the two of them are picking on one one hyena. Oh, there's a third rushing in. That's what is always so interesting about hyenas is there's always something going on. And with clans of this size, the the, hi, the social hierarchy is far more complex than we used to in South Africa. So uh, this clan is probably close to 80 or 90 strong, and uh, they will do a lot of their own hunting. But of course, they are the ultimate opportunist and if they can steal a meal they will you can see one of the wildebeest in front and then some egyptian goose and one of those grants or tommies in the back oh, difficult oh tommy thompson's gazelles in the distance and hyenas hyenas everywhere now the wildebeest we're seeing around here are not part of the main migration that's moved from the Serengeti. They are part of the local migration that move from the northern conservancies down into the Mara. Oh, there's some crown cranes up on the ridge as well. Is that a crown crane? Yes, it is a crown crane in the distance. Now, uh, hello, Lynn. Uh, Lynn would like to know what sets off the Great Migration. Well, Lynn, it's 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 not one thing, but a whole host of things. Fire plays an important role. Uh, so does. So does uh, the rain in particular, and of course, uh, grazing pressure. So the wildebeest will move throughout the Serengeti and Mara system, uh, chasing a lot of the good grass. Now, a lot of people wonder why a wildebeest would be so silly as to jump the murderous Mara River, that is. It's because once they've finished the grazing on one side, they need to move to the other side. And local rains really pay an important role in where they go. So even if they're on this side and all of a sudden it rains a little bit late on the triangle side, the wildebeest will move through there. And in the sheer numbers they move, the couple of thousand, and I, I do mean thousand, that die while crossing the river, either from drowning or from crocodiles or from broken legs, and and top off with all the lions and hyenas and cheetah and leopard predation, uh, that sheer mass of numbers enables them to, to continue surviving. Now I think her plan at the moment is to hope that the hyenas uh, move off away from her this area she's in eventually i think she's eyeing out that warthog at the moment but i think the grass is a bit short you see the warty there dave that's what she looks like she's looking at at the moment so there is a plethora of food around but on the short grass sometimes it's a little bit challenging for her to get a bit closer to it bye day Definitely. Uh, just go into YouTube and type in Safari Live. And if you want to ask me questions, hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. I'm afraid not. Otherwise, I've got to make you sign lots of pieces of paper. Safari Live. Safari Live, yes. Awesome. Awesome. Cheers, guys. There we go. We found some new fans next to us. From the United States. From the United States. 
and you can see the amount of flies and, and especially now that the, the wildebeest, even the local migration has arrived, um, the fly numbers will increase and we've had late rain so lots of breeding of flies and I definitely think these lions are far more zen than the, the Kruger lions uh, because they are able to just put up with all those biting flies on their schnoz at all times. Oh, looks like she's tucked in and uh, going to have a little nap. Uh, less than 100 meters from her is the closest wildebeest. And I think she will be hoping that these wildebeest, and they do, especially the males, uh, chase each other around and make lots of noise. And uh, hopefully they'll get distracted and wander into her. The position she's in at the moment is quite good because it could be anything might wander into her. But she does face this really big problem at the moment that when she does eventually catch something, the hyenas will come rushing in. Holly, you're opening up a can of worms. Holly says the hyenas in the Mara are prettier than the ones at Juma. Ooh, Holly, you're very, very brave. I think uh, I say they're equally as beautiful. I'm going to play the, the, the safe game here. They're definitely busier. Well, probably not busier, just it's much easier to, to see them uh, just due to the open nature. Uh, and of course, we'll be able to see a lot more interactions and their behavior will be slightly different because of the ecosystem we're in. There's this constant sound around us. And uh, we're definitely learning how to speak wildebeest since we've been here. Uh, there's quite a few different calls that they make. And, and you've probably found, I think, that the most interesting call is um, when the wildebeest are trying to get lucky. So normally it's just, nah, just, where are you? I think, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And then when they're trying to get lucky, it's like, come here! And quite often they fail, and they miss. And then when they see another, when they see another male charging towards their group of females, it's more of like, ah! I suppose you can imagine sort of a rugby player or football player charging in to, to make an attack. What are you spotted, Dave? No, just the Voldies. Just the Voldies. Where are you? Where are you? Well, probably the, the two lone bulls like that are going, um, where are the girls? Where are the girls? Where are the girls? Or why don't I have girls? Why don't I have girls? Yeah, they look a little young. So it, it's a, a really interesting to watch because the, the, the whole dynamic is completely different uh, to the, the wildebeest in, in, in South Africa where you have those territorial bulls who will mark out their patch. So here the territorial bulls are constantly moving because the ladies are moving and you've got to keep up with the ladies. And uh, it is quite challenging because there is a lot of competition. Hi, Mita, who's eight years old. Mita is wondering, do the wildebeest come from one place? No, they don't, Mita. They, they, they come from various different places. Uh, these wildebeest around here come from the north of us, and they go up towards the foothills um, of the mountain range to the north of us, and that's where they uh, graze during the green season. And then as it dries out and, and less and less rain, they move down to the, the, the Mara Plains in this area. And uh, the other wildebeest will migrate much, much further. And they don't all migrate together. So there's probably three or four different lines of wildebeest. But by the, well, probably by the end of, end of July, they're all going to be spread throughout uh, the 170,000 hectares odd that is the Maasai Mara. So they're far more spread out when they're in the Serengeti. But when they are here, they are literally packed in to this tiny area. And it makes for one of the greatest spectacles on earth. And we are so excited to be able to share this with you. Now, this lioness doesn't look like she's gonna do too much. And I saw some vultures landing not too far away. So I'm gonna probably come back to her, but I'm gonna to bumble towards the vultures. In the meantime, uh, Byron has got one of the most beautiful birds of prey on Juma. <laughs> 